say to you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened for you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My dear friends, today we celebrate Rogation Days. We don't normally have these in the ordinary form, but in the extraordinary form, there are three days of prayer. Rogation means to petition, to ask, to pray, to ask God for special graces. Now, historically, this began, this practice began in the fifth century in the Diocese of Vienne, where St. Marmetius, because of all the troubles that they were going through, they had all kinds of calamities and so forth, he decided to have three days of prayer and expiation to call down the blessings of God. And he instituted uh, processions and prayers. And originally the processions would last almost the whole day, go from early morning to late in the afternoon. And all those who were slaves and serfs and so forth were given the days free because they would, they would have to participate in the, in the processions. And they would chant the prayers from church to church. St. Uh, Charles Borromeo reinstituted this practice in his churches in the Diocese of Milan in the 16th century. And he would go to 13 churches on, one, on Monday, nine churches on Tuesday, and 11 churches on Wednesday. And he would go in procession and pray. And at one church, he would offer up Holy Mass and give a homily. So they were full days of prayer because they wished to bring down upon the diocese and the people the, the good things that, that God would give us. It's appropriate too, not only for expiation, but also for this time of the year, the springtime. As you pass the fields nowadays, now around the area, you see many of them are turned over. They're starting to plant. So we're asking God to bless, bless our, our fields. Also bless our world, especially when you think about where we are as a nation. As you know, various states have just started inaugurating, like Rhode Island, same-sex unions, promoting them, and so on. So we need to do a lot of reparation. And this is why we call down the saints. What better way than to ask the saints, all the saints, and it was nice to have so many saints listed, because every time we ask that saint, St. Dominic, St. Francis, St. Ignatius, and so on, to pray for us, we're asking them to pray for us, help us. We need a lot of help, all the holy martyrs, all the doctors, all the virgins, and so on. So this is a, a wonderful time for prayer. And it's just a little, little more, gives a little more time for the mass, but that's not so bad. We're not going anywhere, any place. As I said, in the old days, the slaves would have a free day because it would take so much prayer. So. This is a wonderful thing. Today's first reading also reminds us how we should pray for one another. And that's what we do on Rogation Days. We pray for one another, pray for, for, for everybody. Elias prayed that there, there would be no rain for, and there was no rain for three and a half years. And then he prayed that there would be rain and there was rain. And so we pray for all those people that we know in our lives who need conversion. St. James says, if you save one man, you'll save your own soul. And who knows the many people that we pray for, we won't see where our prayers are going in this life. God doesn't show us how effective our prayers are, but you have to believe when we're praying each day at Holy Mass and the Rosary and so forth, that many, many people will be saved. That's what Our Lady said at Fatima, to pray for souls. Many souls would not go to heaven because no one was praying for them. She also reminded us of another thing why we have these rogation days at Fatima. Men must stop offending God. He's too much offended by sin. That's why we have rogation days, to expiate the sins that we've committed in the world. And as you know, our world is filled with sin. 
And if St. Mametius offered these days for, uh, to prevent chastisements and so forth, what we should be doing is being down on our knees and praying a little more, especially for our world. You've got to believe that the people who are enacting these, rules, these, these laws all these politicians capitulating to the, to the popular out uh, request for this kind of stuff, same-sex marriages. I shouldn't say popular, just from a, a small segment of society that's demanding it, capitulating and giving in. They have to answer to God. So we should pray for them because it's going to be a very serious thing. As you know, the Lord said, if you scandalize one of these little ones, it would be better for a millstone to be put around your neck and you'd be thrown in the sea. All these politicians are scandalizing us. How can they do these terrible things? Right? So we should pray for them because what's going to happen to them if they don't repent is going to be worse than millstones put around their neck. And we see in this gospel how we pick the gospel, especially we're asking for, for prayers, and we see if a man gives help to somebody because he constantly asks and persevering, he doesn't want to get out of his bed and give him anything, but the man keeps on knocking on the door, and just to get rid of him, he'll go down and answer the door. How much more a God who is so good, how he will answer all of our prayers, Right? Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened to you. And finally, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, one of the aspects of the rogation days that we have it at this time of the year, it's because of the, the ending of the Jesus' 40 days on earth. It's three days before the ascension of Ascension Thursday when Jesus is leaving us. So the paschal joy that we've had for these 40 days to have Jesus with us was tinged now these last three days with a little sorrow because Jesus is going to ascend into heaven. And of course, in the, these rogation days, in the early days, they would do fast, fast and abstain, days of fasting and abstinence to also call down the grace of God. They would not have meat, and they would eat Charles Barameo and his, when he was saying he would have only bread and water during these three days. Three days of fasting, abstinence, and prayer to bring down the blessings of Almighty God. So let's carry on that penitential spirit as we have a little sadness. The Lord is, is going to heaven, and he's been with us for 40 days. And we're sad because he is leaving. He's no longer here on earth. But of course, his ascension, as we know, is proof that we too will ascend into heaven. So there's always that joy that we too will someday be with him for all eternity. And that, as you know, that time goes, time in life <coughs> goes very, very fast. And we need to realize that. And as St. Francis says, while we have time, let us do good. Let us pray and sacrifice for the for our church and the people in the church, united with one another. Because when we pray in union with the church and we pray together, as we said, the litany of the saints, we bring down many blessings so on, on, the, on the whole church and all of those for whom we pray. May the Lord bless you. Oh, 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 oh,